Well, good evening, everyone. Um, it's eight o'clock and uh, it's Sunday night, so um, this is our evening service for Greater Grace Church of Chester in Ellesmere Port. Uh, if you are out there and you're watching, uh, maybe give us a wave. Let us know that you are, are there and um, just also. Uh, be advised that you can find us if you've just found us for the first time. We are also um, on uh, ggechurch.co.uk and also at uh, YouTube on the channel of Greater Grace Evangelical Church. So um, you can catch up with us in any of those places. You could email us as well. Um, the email um, attachment is on our website, uh, so you can get go down to contact us. You can find us if you want to discover where we are. There's a map uh, on there as well. And you can uh, archive the uh, previous messages from uh, other times as well. So for tonight, um, we were thinking this morning about uh, the uh, Shunammite woman who Elisha uh, encountered um, and just how she blessed him as the man of God uh, as she ministered to him uh, so we will probably uh, continue on on that theme tonight just with her story um, so uh, let's pray let's give this time to the Lord and let's just see what he does uh, with it for each one Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we thank you this evening for your faithfulness and for your goodness for your life for your truth for all your ways thank you for your word and for uh, the truth that we find in your word, the ways that we discover, the character that we discover, the heart that we discover. Thank you, Lord, for the Saviour that we discover. Lord, we love you tonight, Lord, and we worship you. It is our desire to worship our God, to lift your name, to glorify you, Lord. We pray that you just... Show us your heart tonight, Lord, as well, as we open your word again. Uh, give us your wisdom. Give us your input, Lord. We desire for us to be anointed with your Holy Spirit. If it is not you, then it is nothing. And Lord, we, we know that we are nothing in ourselves, but we rely on your strength, your grace, and your wisdom. And we love you tonight, Lord. Fill us with your life, we pray. And guide us now in the things that we look at. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's good to see some of the regular crew there, Jim and, and Mary. That's great. Um, let's, uh, let's do this as well. Um, we'll read a couple of verses again from... 2 Kings chapter 4 and we'll see what uh, God opens up from there we were reading today from I think it was about verse 8 wasn't it it says there and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem where there was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread and so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in the to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an unholy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither and turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said, and he said unto him, Say unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. 
What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the woman conceives and bear a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your ways, Lord, for your truth and your life. Thank you for the words that we've just read. And thank you for the power of your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would anoint it with your fullness of your presence, with the fullness of your power, with the fullness of your wisdom, Lord, now. Guide us. We desire that you would speak to us now, Lord. We trust you, Lord. And we praise you and we worship you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, we read a little bit more of the story there this time. This morning we focused on um, the chance encounter, as it would seem. We know that there are no chance encounters in the kingdom of God. Everything we have is, a, a, is an anointed uh, encounter. Every time we meet someone, um, there is uh, the opportunity for the exchange of life by the Spirit of God. Uh, that was true back then for Elisha. Uh, it's true for us today when we meet someone. We heard that amazing story of the man that Mary was able to witness to on the train station today. And we think about that. If that train hadn't been delayed, would that conversation have taken place? You know, there, there are so often uh, stories like this where, where God arranges for us to meet someone. Um, myself and my wife we went into Chester this afternoon and again maybe at a different time uh, to normal we had to park in a different place to normal uh, but again it's like well we trust God had the right people for us to meet this afternoon that maybe we wouldn't have met at another time or another place and uh, we just really trust that God has our our whole life in his hands we trust him with every every situation and everything that comes for us. We were focusing again this morning as well of the on the um, the lady, the uh, Shunammite woman. Uh, her name is not given, but we know her by her heart, and we know her by her actions, and we know her by her heart of service for for the man of God. How she uh, uh, built that little. Um, room on the side of a house it's no small thing is it really to, to add an addition to your house it was just one of those things that you know that she thought was right it seemed right at the time and God used it and God blessed her through it and so uh, Elisha became a regular visitor at her home you know what it's great to have that uh, opportunity to have God's people in your home. Um, Ruby had the prayer meeting in her home uh, until we were not able to do it. We're not able to go into the where she lives these days because of the restrictions. Uh, we used to have the prayer meeting in our home years ago. Uh, we used to have Bible school in our home. We used to have Bible school in the men's dorm at times. Uh, various people over the Janet used to have uh, church in her house. Edna, different ones, but over the years many people have had uh, church in their houses 
Bible studies in their houses, prayer in their houses. That's a wonderful thing to have the, the, the body of Christ around. It's sad in this season uh, what we're in at the moment that we're not able to meet in each other's homes. Um, you know, there is something special about that and we pray for the day when that returns. And we, uh, we, we don't resent the fact it's a necessary thing. You know, the government is, is doing this for our own interest and we, we trust um, that we will not uh, endanger anyone's life. But you know what? There is something special about that, about being able to have people in your home uh, from God's people. Uh, the the Shunammite woman, that was her heart, to have the man of God there, that he would come regularly. That it wouldn't just be a, a one-off event. Oh, uh, we have a heard of that. Uh, dear Margaret in our church, she will tell you sometimes at the time that when she met... Um, Cliff Richard, um, she will tell you the whole story if you ask her. Uh, but that was the thing; it was a one, it was a once in a lifetime experience. Now, maybe if Margaret had built a special little Cliff Richard sh shrine onto her house, so that he went in there every time that she, he came by, it would have been the same as the Shunammite, <laughs> the, the Shunammite woman with with uh, with Elisha. Uh, joking of course now really but um, you know what we want that permanent relationship don't we with God's people we want that permanent relationship with the Lord and that was her way of establishing that a bond that couldn't be broken uh, interestingly I was thinking about that the, the things that she put in there the uh, table the stool the bed and the candlestick it's interesting when we look at what is in the tabernacle and then later in the, the temple candlestick is certainly one of the items that is there in the temple isn't it it's there's the the uh, candlestick uh, representing of uh, the lord jesus christ as the light of the world who would come but in the Old Testament times, it was just the candlestick the, the giving light. Uh, the oil, oil often speaks of the Holy Spirit. The candlestick was there as as part of the essential uh, furnishing of the of the tabernacle. The table of showbread was there as well as a place for 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 the for the. Uh, the bread to be put out, the offering, the sacrifice, it was there. Uh, the showbread was there to be seen as well. That, that this is what's going on as a clear message. And then also, like, um, okay, there wasn't a stool, but there was the mercy seat. The altar there, the, the Ark of the Covenant, um, the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant was there. And the, on the top of the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat, where the blood was sprinkled, where the, the, the priest would go in once a year to the holiest place. And that was the place where the presence of God dwelt, the mercy seat. The Lord Jesus Christ was the the one who was to bring mercy was going to be the embodiment of mercy was going to be the embodiment of grace uh, even in that Old Testament era of law there was that pointing to mercy that God would be merciful when the blood was sprinkled it pointed back again to the Passover when the, uh, the blood was on the doorstep uh, on, the, on the doorposts and on the lintel that actually uh, the, the angel of death wouldn't enter in and there would be mercy and at the mercy seat uh, the place of the seat of mercy was part of the int integral uh, central focus 
of the, of the tabernacle and then later on the temple and the Holy of Holies. Now the one thing that there wasn't in the temple was a bed. There was no bed there. Okay, think about that. That's the one difference. But what was there? There was the presence of the Lord. There was the presence of God himself. That he would be our rest. That the presence of the living God would be at the place of rest. That actually he would be our healing. He would be our life. And that, you know, like when uh, God instituted the day, the Sabbath, the day of rest. It was for us to fellowship with him. Christ is our rest. Come unto me all, that he, all ye that labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He's the one. He's the one that we rest in. Our, our rest, um, Hebrews uh, 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 4.9, uh, there, therefore remains our rest for the people of God who cease from their works. It's, it's the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. His presence is rest. Be still and know that I am God. You know, every everything points to this, that actually our place of rest is in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the place where we find peace. He's the place where we find comfort. He's the place where uh, our, our worries, our cares, our sins, our failings, everything goes. We cast all of our care onto him, for he cares for us. And that was the, the, the point. Wow, we've uh, gone a little bit away from what I was uh, planning to speak on tonight. But, you know, God knows these things. We trust him. And we, we just give it into him, into his hands. So the, this lady, the Shunammite, she built this room on. And as we read, Elisha was eager to do something for her. You know, it tells us uh, in, uh, I think, is it uh, Hebrews 6.10 that actually God is not, it does not forget the things that we do uh, when we serve him. He honours our service, our heart of service towards him. And you know what? Um, this lady had served them. She had ministered to them. Uh, and uh, as uh, we read there, it said that uh, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is now to be done for thee? So much effort, so much care, so much thought this woman had put in. We mentioned this morning she originally invited them in to bread, for bread, can't stop and eat bread, and that's what happened. But then the bread came, became a common stop and 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 dwell here, and then it became a room, and then it became uh, it became more than that. It became a permanent dwelling place, uh, and little by little, as she ministered, she grew in her calling and in her ministry to the man of God. And it, and it got more so. It it, uh, it became a real blessing. But he desired to honour that. He said, what, what can we do? What can be done for you? And I, I love the fact that, you know, he said, well, you know, I can speak to the king for you. Well, okay, that's, that's very nice. Thank you. you know. I can speak to the captain of the host. Is there anybody you need uh, an army sent for? Anything you need? Any injustice? Any Anything that you need to be put right? And it's like, well, that's all very nice, that's all very good. But I love what she says. She says, I dwell among my own people. You know what, that shows a great heart of humility, doesn't it? It's like, well, I'm not going to get above my station. Uh, I, you know, fine, I meet the king, lovely. I'd like to do that, that's lovely. Um, the captain of the host, all these important people, yes. But you know what, I, I, I dwell amongst my own people. I'm happy with what God has given me. I'm happy where I am, and I trust 
that God has his provision for me here. I don't really need anything else. I'm not going to ask for anything else. I'm not going to ask for anything for self. I'm going to just trust God and see uh, see what he does. Uh, and Gehazi is the discerning one here. Uh, Elisha's, uh, Elisha's faithful servant. And we know uh, later he, he actually slips up in the story of Naaman. We're not going to mention that today. But... But here, he is the one who is actually discerning and encouraging his master and said, you know what, you know the, what probably she would really like? She won't say it. She won't come out with it. She would never actually confess it. But deep down, she has a desire for a son. It's, the, it's, not, it's not ever been mentioned. It's not ever been expressed. But she has no son. Now think about that again in the biblical times barrenness was quite looked upon as a curse now the it says there that her husband was old in other words the chances of them having a child had become greatly diminished but we know that from scripture that's never a barrier to god he's able to still do these things we see that with abram we see that with uh, zacharias and uh, Elizabeth we see it with with uh, many uh, Hannah as well but like there's the, these things that where the world says oh it's never going to happen oh that won't happen now you know if God desires for it to happen then it can and here we see that this uh, uh, this lady the Shunammite woman uh, she had no child but you know, as I said, you know what? Entreat the Lord for her and see what happens. And Elisha the prophet says, you know, this time, this time next year you'll have a son. You'll, you'll be embracing a son. At this point in time, I'll tell you the date, I'll tell you the time of life, uh, you, will, you will be embracing your own son. And she doesn't believe it's a bit like, uh, a bit like Sarah. No, don't, you know, don't don't lie to me, don't don't mock me, don't uh, don't tease me about this. Um, but she doesn't laugh like uh, she doesn't make light of it and laugh like Sarah does. Um, but uh, but she is uh, very humble about it. Oh no, I, you know, I don't I don't need these things, I don't I don't desire these things. But God says God says, No, you will be blessed. I'm going to honour you this way. And yeah, it happens. The faithfulness of God is there. Uh, the faithfulness of God is, to re is there to reward her kindness, to reward her heart, and to give her the thing that actually she desired the most. Secretly, she didn't tell anyone. She didn't say it. She didn't come out with it. It wasn't like something she was obviously talking about all the time that someone picked up on now it was like the hidden desire of her heart but God knew what would really bless her and God knew and the, and uh, Elisha was able to give her that promise and God was faithful in that promise this is what you'll have uh, you're going to have a child you're going to have a son and uh, we didn't read that part of the story but um, we know if we've read the word of God before, we know the, how the story goes. That uh, shortly after that, the, the boy is in the field. Actually, maybe we can read it. If you read it. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's read what it actually says. It says, um, And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And his and he said unto his father my head my head and he said uh, to a lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then he died and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God 
and shut the door upon him and went out and she called into her husband and said send me I pray thee one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again and he said wherefore wilt thou go to him today it is neither new moon nor sabbath and she said it shall be well then she saddled an ass and said to her servant drive and go forward slack not thy riding for me except I bid thee so she went and came unto the man of God to the man to Mount Carmel and it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi his servant behold yonder is that Shunammite run now I pray thee to meet her and say to her is it well with thee is it well with thy husband is it well with the child and she answered it is well and when she came the man of God uh, to the man of God to the hill she caught him by the feet but Gehazi came and near to thrust her away and the man of God said let her alone her soul is vexed within her and the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me and she said did I desire a son of my Lord did I not say do not deceive me and then he said to Gehazi gird up the loins thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way if thou meet any man salute him not and if any man salute thee answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child and the mother of the child said as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave thee and he arose and followed her wow story goes on we won't read it all tonight for the sake of time but um, this woman receives her, her child back from the dead uh, Elisha after a long it's quite a long story actually a long um, uh, story of how uh, the child is revived by the Spirit of God uh, by the man of God but just this is the thing that we know about the Shunammite woman the most yes we see her heart to provide we see her heart to serve we see her heart uh, as, a, as a godly humble woman but we also see when suffering comes when trials come when she loses her child what is her response I go to the man of God I go I, f I run as fast as I can uh, to to the man of God I turn to the Lord in the time of need and I seek his face and I seek his counsel and when people ask how is it what's going on how are you doing her confession is it is well I'm trusting God in this I'm not going to let this uh, situation overwhelm me I'm not going to let this situation destroy me um, yeah you know what losing a child is one of the worst uh, trials that people go through in this life um, but you know what her faith in God was such that she could say no it is well I'm not going to bother people with my troubles I'm not going to I'm not going to confess that uh, that, that is the, the desperate need I'm not going to look at that I'm going to look to God I'm going to trust him and my confession is it is well we know the, the story of the hymn that was written it is well with my soul uh, was, was Spafford that wrote it wasn't it I think and his, uh, his 
his daughters, his fa entire family, apart from his wife, his all of his daughters, I think, was it five daughters, four daughters, I'm not sure, uh, they all drowned. Um, but he was able to bear that with the help of his Saviour, a living God, and say, you know what, it is well with my soul. Though this world will bring us trouble, though it will bring us problems, uh, the whole world may feel like it's caving in or, or turned upside down. Many people have gone through a lot of trials this, this year, in 2020. But you know what? God is still on the throne and God is still in control. And uh, this woman, the, the, the Shunammite woman, her confession was, it is well. I'm trusting. Uh, God is still in control and I'm going to find the man of God. And she does say, you know, did I ask a son? You know, I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this trouble. I didn't ask for this. For, I didn't ask for you to bless me. But, but uh, God has a plan. The man of God has a plan. And we know that actually the end of the story is one of miracles. It's one of life. It's one of joy. Uh, the boy is revived. Life is restored. God is glorified. In fact, this, the, the story is repeated. Gehazi, after he's 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 been smitten with leprosy, after the story of, of man, he is in before the king, and the woman goes to the king at that time. And uh, again, it's an amazing divine appointment that Gehazi has just told the king the story of this woman's son being revived by uh, Elisha. And then the woman walks in just to, with a request from the king. Then she does need to go and see the king. Again, maybe Elisha knew that it would happen one day. Uh, but you know what? God has the whole story in his hands from beginning to end. We see only the bit that we're going through at the moment. We see only the that, that little portion of our life. God knows the whole story. He has our lives in his hands. He has a great plan for us. You know what? There can be miracles around the corner. Uh, we, we trust in him. There can be great things that we haven't seen yet. So often when we look back over the years and we think, oh, that was a terrible thing that happened at that time. But then we see maybe good that came out of it, opportunities that came out of it, differences in direction that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And we see God's hand as a loving father, as a gentle saviour, uh, a God who is no stranger to suffering, a God who is no stranger to trouble and self-sacrifice. He went through it all. He laid down his life for us. He's borne every grief and every sorrow. He knows the things that we go through. He is the man of sorrows. He's acquainted with grief. But he brings us through. He's also the author of our salvation. He's also our, our joy, our peace, our hope, our saviour, our life. We trust him. And like the Shunammite, when trouble comes, uh, we say, you know what, it is well. That would be my confession. I'm not going to look at the issue. I'm not going to. I'm not going to even tell anyone the problem. As my wife was pointing out to me, I think this afternoon, she said, it, "The way I read it, she doesn't even tell her husband what's happened to the son. She just goes to the man of God <laughs> straight off." And it's true. It's. Uh, I mean, we, you can read into it whether, um, whether she did or not. I don't know, but it, it doesn't say that she did tell him. She went straight to the man of God. Uh, and he sends Gehazi straight there. Don't get distracted with anyone else. There's, there's strict purpose there. Don't talk to anyone. If anyone talks to you, don't answer them back. This is urgent. This is 
this has got to be dealt with immediately this is the, 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 the top priority and he goes himself as well and God comes through the living God is able to turn the situation around now for us maybe we have situations you say well that's fine but you know my miracle didn't happen sometimes people say that to us well the, the miracle I was expecting it didn't happen the way that I thought but you know what God is still there God still comes through in different ways and actually by faith we are able to say it is well we trust God with our lives we trust him with our salvation we trust him with our eternity and he's a God that doesn't fail us and he's a God that comes through so let's pray let's give the rest of this evening uh, into the hands of the, of the trustworthy God Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you tonight Lord we thank you that you're a God who is able to lay down your life for us you're a God who bears every pain for us you're a, a God who knows our suffering who knows our need you're the God who is able to give us peace give us rest give us hope when this world offers nothing when this world is shattered when our lives are in a mess we turn to the God who's there who is eternal who is our source of strength who is our place of rest we have a place of fellowship we have a place of light we have a place of sacrifice but we also have a place of rest and that is in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ thank you Lord that you gave all for us and thank you Lord that you invite us to trust you thank you Lord for the testimony of the Shunammite woman who can say in, in the worst situation it is well I trust my God I trust the man of God I trust for the outcome I don't know what the outcome will be I don't even hope for the outcome but I you know I just trust and Lord we we thank you Lord that we have a God and we have a Savior who comes through for us whatever our situation that we go we are going through Lord we trust you and we thank you and we say it is well God is in his rightful place God is on it we are nothing by comparison we don't deserve anything but we thank you Lord that you're a God who remembers us who sees our need who knows our suffering who knows when we need rest you're the God who strengthens us you're the God who lifts us up you're the God who provides for us Lord and we trust you for everything and Lord we just pray again if there's anyone out there that has never trusted us, the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour Lord we just ask that this would be the time when they say Lord I need you more than ever before the faces that the, the facing the situation sort and the, the things that I'm going through I need you more than ever but I, I know that you are there I trust that you are there and I believe that you can do it and I put my life in your hands Lord we worship you now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen well for those that have joined us thank you it's good to be together it's good to open God's word again and touch on these ideas so God bless uh, and goodbye and see you soon and uh, stay praising <laughs>